Hello, welcome to Dungeon Drawlers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. So, for today's review for X-Men Month, we're reviewing X-Force Legacy of Vengeance, which is, this is a comic book that collects the first three issues of Craig Kyle's and Christopher Yost's uh, X-Force run, right? Which came out in 2008. If you want the trade paperback, which comes with the first six issues, you want to get this book, X-Force, Angels and Demons, right? Which I'm not reviewing this today because I had a busy day today. I just got back from watching Top Gun Maverick. And I'm going to be doing a review of that and Top Gun on Friday's video. So make sure to check that out if you're interested, right? So yeah, this collects the first three issues. You got a cool variant cover by uh, Brian Hitch from Ultimates, who also worked on uh, this great Hawkman run. Yeah, you got the bloody variant, right? So yeah, this this book um, has has art by Clayton Crane, who we reviewed a bunch of stuff from him. Uh, uh, he did, like, a lot of work for Valiant in, like, the 2010 or 2012, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, this this uh, comic takes, is post-Decimation, uh, right? And, like, the, um, the X-Men are dealing with this group of uh, anti-mutants, this anti-mutant group called the Purifiers, which is this religious group led by William Stryker, which I thought he was a Weapon X guy. <laughs> I didn't know he was a religious nut. Um, who wants to wipe out all the X-Men, and he's been killed, right? But the Purifiers are still active um, and want to uh, kill, kill all the X-Men, right? So Cyclops decides to bring back... X Force, which was originally a group led and created by Nathan Summers, aka Cable, which is uh, uh, which is Cyclops and Jean Grey's son from the future, right? Uh, but like Cyclops decides to get Logan Wolverine to to uh, stop to bring back uh, X Force and lead them and have them go on a mission against. Uh, against uh, the purifiers to wipe them out, right? Because they um, they st- they stole something from a shield v- facility, right? That could be used as a weapon against uh, uh, X Men, which I totally forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I do. It's it was Nimrod, right? So like the the team the team is. Uh, Warpath, who was also X Force, who's the brother of Thunderbird, right? You have, you have Wolverine, you have X twenty three, which was created by Craig Kyle and Chris Yost when they when they worked on the X Men Evolution cartoon, right? Also, you got Rain, aka Wolfsbane, from New Mutant, New Mutants and X Factor on the team as well, right? Yeah, so like yeah, they they st- they steal. They steal Nimrod and bring and bring it uh, bring it back uh, bring it back to their base and uh, I'm trying to get to here's Nimrod right which you might know from the X Men cartoon they they bring it back and combine it with this robot from this robot called Bastion right. Which you got this really cool art, man. I, re- I love I love creating uh, <laughs> cranes art. My problem with this uh, transformation is that he was it was a robot's body that they just put a human head on, and then for some reason it goes from being like super bulky uh, robot to like you know guy in a suit, right? And uh, th- this robot was from the future that's you know that came to the past to like you know wipe out mutants because they're a threat to humanity right yeah so yeah what ends up happening in this comic is that rain um wanted to join x-force but was uh told not to because you know uh, wolverine doesn't want rain because of her religious background to become a killer right which 
They, they have no problem killing people in this comic, right? <laughs> That's what X-Force is all about, right? Lots of cool action, right? But it turns out Rain shows up anyway because it turns out her father joined the joined the, the purifiers and she wants to meet them, right? She ends up getting captured, uh, captured by them, right? So what, what ends up happening is they... Uh, they go on a mission, there's, you know, uh, disagreements between, like, the Purifiers and Bastion, right? And they, they go, they go, uh, Bastion has the Purifiers go on a mission to retrieve part, parts of Phalanx, the, uh, the techno-organic virus, and they use it to re resurrect, um, to resurrect, um, you know... Resurrect uh, some anti mutant like uh, leaders, right? Including, uh, they, they show you here, right? There's a cool page. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to find it. Here, here you, here you go. You got uh, Clay. Great and Creed from Friends of Humanity, and they get they even give the kill counts right. You got Donald P Donald Pierce, um, Stephen Lang from Phalanx Covenant, uh, William Stryker, the Leper Queen, Cameron Hodge is also back who who died in uh, Phalanx Covenant from that Gen X omnibus I reviewed. Also, the guy who, who invented, like, uh, Sentinels, and he has a huge uh, mutant kill count, right? And that's how the comic ends, right? Which they end up rescuing um, uh, Rain, by the way. So, what did I think about this comic book? Obviously, I, I bought this back in the day, and I highly enjoy it because of the cool art, you, you, you get to see this darker side of the X-Men, where they're pretty brutal, right? Uh, have, they have no problem killing people, and the art is fantastic, and so is the cover, right? So I would, I would give this, you know, a sol a solid, um, you know, if you a solid s seven out of ten. But like, if you're looking for deep like storytelling, you don't really get that here. You do have some of the characters like Warpath, who's conflicted with killing people, and you obviously you have like because of X 23s history, um, Wolverine doesn't exactly want her to go out and kill people because you know she's like this uh, human weapon, right? Created by Weapon X, so like. Uh, and who's who was a clone made from Wolverine's DNA? So Wolverine feels somewhat responsible for her. And like, there's a scene where like, because he Wolverine didn't want her on a team, so he like he pu he punched out like Cyclops, right? Oh uh, man, I, I I can't find it. But yeah, the art the art's cool. Beautiful art by Clayton Crane. Yeah, so I like I said, seven out of ten, and I, I liked it enough that I picked up Angels and Demons and uh, Sex and Violence, which I'm not sure if this is the second volume, but you know I picked it up anyway. So yeah, that's uh, it for this review, guys. My next review for X Men Month is going to be Uncanny X Men: The New Age, The Cruelest Cut, which is actually the second volume in the series, right? But I, you know, I, I never, I don't have the first volume, which the first volume is um, a end of history, right? Which you can see it there. Yeah. So we're gonna review this next for X Men Month. Um, I'm also gonna show you guys the other books I'm going to review for X Men Month. We got uh, the third volume, Uncanny X Men: The New Age on Ice. Ultimate Medium, the, fan, the Ultimate Fantastic Four, and Ultimate X-Men crossover. Gen Next United. X-Men with Great Power, which is the second volume in uh, Victor Gishler's X-Men run, which I'm a huge fan of Victor Gishler. We got 
we got Giant Size Ecstatics with Mike Allred and Peter Mulligan. We got Uncanny X Force The Apocalypse Solution, which has Deadpool on the team, and Phantom X, Psylocke, and um, uh, Archangel with uh, Wolverine leading the team. And we have Uncanny X Force Death Clock Nation. I'm not going to spoil. Um, I'm not going to spoil the, uh, what the finale for X-Men Month is going to be, but you, you guys should enjoy it. It's another, it's another huge book, right? So it should get some views, all right? So yeah, that's it for this video.